obviously with the latest school shooting in the news, what do you tell people that are going for more gun control and so, get the guns off the streets? Again, here's what I'll say. I mean, 100 years ago and even 50 years ago, we had more guns per capita in America than we do now. It's not a gun problem. Guns in these instances have been involved, clearly. Guns have often been involved when people have lost their lives. But the reality is it's not a gun problem. It's not having too many guns. There used to be more guns per person in America than there are now, but children did not go to school and kill other children. When I was a kid, especially after Christmas, people brought their guns to school. My friends, we'd get a new shotgun, get a 22 or something, you'd come to school and show it to your friends. It was supposed to stay outside in your truck, which may or may not have been locked. But kids would bring them on the buses. Sometimes they would be in kids' lockers. Nobody even thought about shooting other people with them. So it's not a gun problem. What I would say to those for whom that is the solution, get a new idea, because that is not the solution. It is a cultural problem. We have a culture that is desensitized to death, that is desensitized to the value of life, and we celebrate death through our musical lyrics, we celebrate death through video games that literally reward you with extra points for going back and for finishing people off. I mean, it is horrific and it is graphic, increasingly realistic. The, the television shows that now are even on prime time, movies, again, these are things that have long existed, but the degree of specificity, the graphic nature of them, the encouraging of people to participate in the form of video games, and then the belief that none of this is connected to what we're seeing, give me a break. We've removed any responsibility from the homes and from communities, from schools and from churches, from things that once were the background and the, and the, and the foundation of the mores of a nation. We've told these people to keep a lid on it, keep that in your own uh, mind. So we've removed any sense of right or wrong. We've infused that with a whole lot of do whatever, including taking human life, and then we're shocked when people do it. We gotta grow up here in America. We gotta be serious about the fact this is a cultural problem. And in America, at every level, from the homes that we live in to the White House and everywhere in between, we need to have a frank and honest dialogue about the cultural reasons for young people killing young people. It's not the gun, because they could just as easily run kids over while they're waiting in line to get on a school bus. What is the mindset that's causing young people to kill other young people? That's what needs to be addressed. Is there any evidence that drawing the connection to video games and movies and this behavior? Again, go back before any of these existed. How many children walked into schools and slaughtered other children? How much more evidence do you need? You have 17 more dead children in Florida. We had a couple dead children a few weeks ago here in Kentucky. How much more evidence do people want? The people who say there's no evidence are full of crap, frankly, and are using that as an excuse to not address the fact that we have plenty of dead bodies of our children that are the evidence. I don't know how much more anybody needs. What should the government do about this, if anything? Again, let's start a dialogue. The, the most important thing, back to the beginning of your question, not to have any knee-jerk response. The idea that we need to do this or to do that, this rule or that law, that is not the answer. And mistakes are made when people, in, with good intention, in moments of emotion, rush to judgment. Let's start an honest conversation about what is or is not appropriate to be infusing into our young people. And I'm a big believer in the Constitution and the First Amendment and the right to free speech, but there are certain things that are so graphic as it relates to violence and things that are so pornographic as well on a whole nother front that we allow to pass under the guise of free speech, which arguably are, but there is zero redemptive value. There is zero upside to any of this being in the public domain, let alone in the minds and hands and in, in, in homes of our young people. We need to have honest conversation about what should or should not even be allowed in the United States as it relates to some of the things that are being put in the hands of our young people. You know what that threshold should be? Again, no, I mean, this is, let's start a conversation. I'm one person, you're one person. There's no one person, not one person who has it all figured out, nor is there a perfect solution because evil exists. And don't kid yourself, what you saw was evil. But I'll tell you another thing too, as long as we're talking about this. We talked today about a company that's looking at the pharmacodynamic effect of certain drugs. 
in the pharmacogenomic effect of certain drugs. Every human being has a different physiology. And you look at the number of children that have been involved in these shootings who are on some kind of psychiatric drug. Listen, go watch a football game, watch a basketball game. They, I don't care what they're advertising. It could be for constipation, it could be for PTSD, it could be for anything in between. You listen to the little disclaimer at the end. How many of them have very specific warnings about suicidal thoughts and thoughts of self-harm and of the thoughts of depression? These are the catalysts for some of what we're seeing in these schools. Let's not kid ourselves. If we fail to talk about that, by having knee-jerk responses about more rules needed for this, that, or the other thing, we are intentionally misleading ourselves, and that is a mistake. There will never be a perfect solution for keeping evil in a box, but we can be a lot smarter by talking about the societal impact of encouraging certain behaviors that have absolutely no upside for America.